Let's make the duplicate stitch. Hey, welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today this is my friend, Marla. Hi. <laughs> and she is joining me for an upcoming video on the duplicate stitch. And we are going, there's a hint of what's going on. And is. you'll see in just a minute. Thanks for joining, joining me, Marla. Hey, you're welcome. My pleasure, Kristen. <laughs> Yay. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you. All right, so watch the upcoming video on the duplicate stitch. And we are going to make a letter and put it on a hat. And I'm here to welcome Marla. And she is here with me today and going to teach us. Hi, Kristen. I'm Hi. super excited to be here. This is going to be great fun. Yay. Well, can you tell me why we're making a white beanie with a red E? This is for a new movie called Eddie the Eagle, and it's about a young man, Eddie Edwards, with the dreams of being an Olympian and never stop believing in himself. And we are uh, making this in honor of him and working on a contest, but we want you to learn how to do the duplicate Great. stitch. Great. Well, first of all, duplicate stitch is more embroidery than it is knitting, but it is done on the knit canvas, and normally it's done on stockinette stitch, which in the round I love because it's all knit stitches, and um, otherwise, you know, knit on the front, purl on the back, so your basic st stockinette. And uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of tricks to get started. First of all, I've knit this in a chunky yarn, mm -hmm. so it'd go really fast, and it gives me a nice base. You can see all the V's, or if you want to look at them the other way, they're an A. You can duplicate stitch either direction, but I'm going to show you the V direction. And um, you need a needle, of course. But the first thing to do is to get a yarn that's at least as thick as the yarn that you've used. You can go thicker, like this yarn is really thick, but we're gonna use this yarn because it's just about the same weight as the one I have in the project. You can use either a, need a curved needle or a straight needle. And I'm gonna show you my little trick. This is a dental floss threader, which I'm going to put my yarn in with. And because it is embroidery, I'm not going to just use straight off the um, ball there. I'm going to pull out some yarn because what I use is going to have to be pulled through the project. And I don't want to have to pull too much through. So when you're starting, you're always going to leave a tail. We're going to come back later and weave the tail in. But we don't want to just weave it in randomly because it'll show up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to look here, and I have a graph. Now you can use any kind of graph, and there's lots of graphs available online. Mm -hmm. um, I made these specifically for you because I use this chunky yarn, and I wanted it to be a couple inches high. So let's get started. Okay. So the first thing is I have a tail. I'm going to leave it on the back, and I'm going to start at the upper right corner of this. So I know I can look and see how many rows that is, and I already know that it's about 20 rows, but I want my upper right corner to be about right here. Now you may wonder why I have my hat half finished, and it's so that I can get to the hat, to the duplicate stitch area more easily. You can also work it on a flat panel, mm -hmm. which I'll be doing a scarf for you, and you'll see that later. Okay, so you're gonna start out by putting your needle where that's where your top edge of your stitch is. Now some people take a um, invisible marker and mark where they're gonna duplicate stitch. Now there's my tail on the back. Okay. And what I'm doing is in the duplicate stitch, I am following this shape. You see my knit stitch right here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm following that. I'm gonna put this behind. Okay. Pull it through. Now don't pull tightly because you're trying to cover that whole knit stitch. And now I'm going to go down. So it's like you're doing a stitch and a half almost. It, yeah, it and this actually it's an it's an embroidery stitch. And now I've covered that one stitch. Now I'm going to go to the stitch next to it. Okay. Which is right here. And you're going to see that horizontal duplicate stitch has a lot of V in it. You can see the edges. It's almost like it's on a computer and pixelated. So I usually will, if I want a solid line, like I have here, two rows, mm -hmm. um, just so it makes it a little more solid. But you see, you can make any design. So I'm just coming up at the bottom of that V of the knit stitch, pulling it up, but not mm -hmm. too tight. Then I'm going behind, all in one motion, and then back through where I started. 
Now what it does on the back is it makes a very neat, whoops, looks like I got my tail caught. There we go. It makes a very neat straight line across oh, the yeah. back. I see that. And so it does look pretty nice on the back as well as the front. And what's going to happen is when we finish, we'll weave in those ends, but we'll weave them in, in behind our red. Okay, so sometimes you get backwards there. Okay, so you see now why I have it open on both sides. Mm -hmm. I see that. <laughs> so um, I'm following this, it's much and easier. it's I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, each one of those blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I'm going to do twelve total. And you'll find this chart on the Good Knit Kisses website. Thank you so much, Marla, for doing this. Oh, my pleasure. I've been an embroiderer even longer than I've been a knitter. And so um, it's lots of fun. If you were ever a counted cross-stitcher, you mm -hmm. already know how to count your charts. You know, it has been years since I have done cross-stitching, but there's so many people who really enjoy it. It makes me wonder if I have to pick something back up again because it was fun. You know what I found, though? I love doing my embroidery on my knitted projects. Mm -hmm. The problem is, what do I do with those counted cross-stitch projects? Mm -hmm. And lots of my knitting friends used to cross-stitch. Mm -hmm. So if you get it, if, if it gets kind of crooked, you can always just pull okay. and stretch. Or if I went, like that side looks a little tight. So before mm -hmm. I go on, I can pull that back out. Okay, just ease and your e tension. Ease your tension up just a little bit, whatever you need to do. Perfect. And then you just keep following along that same row mm -hmm. until you get to the end. Now, I'm going to jump back and show you the vertical side okay. as well. So I'm not going to finish this whole row. I am going to go backwards though and show you the reason why I'm doing two rows of duplicate stitch um, here. Okay. So I'm going to go the stitch below. Now you can also do duplicate stitch on using the A formation that's on your pattern. Okay. I don't usually do that because to me the knit stitch is a V. Yeah, I would agree. Um, but you'll see that whenever you fill in two lines horizontally, it really fills in a lot more. Vertically, you can see it makes a solid line. Mm -hmm. But when you're doing a horizontal line, it takes two to really yeah. make it look solid. So I can see that, um, here, let me get there we're back I had to make an adjustment but we are um so what we were talking about is having this top area done the top row done and then when you work downward it really fills in that gap yeah it really fills in the gap I feel like just one row of duplicate stitch is very um very faint and so you'll see though that the vertical stitch when I get down there in just a moment you'll see that it is not like that at all. You can see every stitch because your vertical stitch is completely filled in. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm here and I'm going to start going down. Oh, okay. So you're skipping short. No, no. A little I'm going to do. No, I have. I'm going to have two columns. Oh, right. Down. Okay. If you look at my chart, there's see actually yeah. two there. I see that there. But you'll see somewhere. though that the vertical fills in really nicely with even just one mm -hmm. because the V shape is what is what um, you're following. So again, we're just doing the V. Okay. So you're doing that closer column to the... Um, uh -huh, and the then I'm going to come back and fill in the other column. Okay. So we're I'm just going to kind of point on this. You can't see the the checks on here but but um, you can we're starting, you can we're doing raise that you see the side there's my grid yeah. so I'm gonna be doing two rows here and I did two rows here as mm -hmm. well so yeah, they you're, look you're... taller on the chart mm -hmm. but that's because the knit stitch is taller than it is wide mm -hmm. and when you go to fill it in though you'll see a single duplicate stitch vertically <laughs> fills in really beautifully and that's why I did two rows on your chart, because I wanted people to be able to see the E on the hat. Oh, of course. These is, this is going to be so You've got fun. got see this on the red carpet. Exactly. <laughs> well, I brought, to, brought some sequins to put with the beanie just to make sure it was going to work, you know. 
Well, and of course this video is going to be much older than um, the, than going to a premiere. And so I wanted um, to be able to show how to do the embroidery stitch, but it works out so well showing it on a stark white. My goodness. I know. I love this red and white together. And I I did look at a couple of other yarns. And, you know, you could, if you're just really trying to get an E going, mm -hmm. you could do some other things. You could embroider it with back stitch, which is just, um, doesn't have anything at all to do with knitting. You just use your knitting like it's a piece of cloth mm -hmm. yeah, and just like embroider a chain, a chain stitch or something yeah and just and and do a really thick yarn but I really love the duplicate stitch because we're here using a single color on a single color but if you don't do intarsia work you can go back and make a picture on something and so you can see how well the vertical, mm -hmm. see how it really then, shows up. Yeah. yeah, and then if we trap something in, can we go back over that and fluff we it out? We could, we can. We can just fluff it out like this. So we're gonna pull I'm that. I'm sure that I would do that too. Yes, <laughs> And there. then see how it just fixes you itself. You can just fluff it out. That's so nice. Yeah, and that's, duplicate stitch is nice. It's also, you can just pull it out. Uh -huh. If I wanted to be really a perfectionist, the way you pull it out is just to okay. pull the yarn well, from your good. needle. It's good to know how to frog something, right? Yeah, and pull the yarn out from your needle and just go back in okay. and pull it out because it's not hard to do and you and it's not going to hurt your yarn mm -hmm. to just go in and, and go backwards just like that and you can pull it out and then restart. That's great. Yeah, that makes it... <laughs> That's one of the great things. It's not like where you make a problem and where you have a row of knitting that's five rows back that mm -hmm. you made a mistake. No, this is super easy to take out and redo mm -hmm. because you really don't want to cut through a piece of yarn. Mm -hmm. You want it to be um, following the stitch. Mm -hmm. Well, that is great. I think... I think we've got it. And so then if you were to close that off, you just okay. pull it to yeah, the back. Okay, yeah, so so when you pull it to the back, you're going to have two tails. Okay. And you can see I've, this tail has already started to be caught. Okay. And what I'm going to do is run this tail into my needle now that I have, if I had finished. So I'm going to run this tail into my needle. And I want to be really neat on the back, but I want to make sure that my dark yarn is not woven through the white area. So I'm actually going to do what we do in embroidery, which is we go through just like this and just kind of pull that around okay. the stitches that are there and just run the yarn through, okay. you know, a little bit. You don't want it to be too bumpy but mm -hmm. just run it through several of the stitches. Behind where we already have Behind where we have the color. red, exactly. Okay. And so I actually ran it in the back of the red stitches. Mm -hmm. And that way, none of it's over here poking through your white area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's oh, your that's, duplicate that's stitch. That's excellent. And so that other line would just come around here. Right. And there's, then and so the, big E. There's a graph that we've made several graphs. Excellent. So you can follow whichever one you like. And there's a ton of graphs online. If you buy a beanie that's already done, that's mm -hmm. worsted weight, or you buy a sweater at the thrift store, you can duplicate stitch over a stain mm -hmm. and make a design. So that's lots great. of fun. So today you have used Cascade Yarns uh, Pacific Chunky. Uh -huh. And uh, this is... Color see, 02 color White. Color 02 White, yeah. And it's 60% acrylic and 40% superwash merino, which is great. Which makes it fluffy and it makes it have a great stitch definition. And you mm -hmm. really, when you're doing duplicate stitch, want the stitch definition in mm -hmm. your in your work. And this would be a worsted uh, type of Actually, weight. Actually, this is heavier than a worsted. Is it, is it's like a bulky. bulky. It's, a, it's considered a is chunky. Is it really? Okay. I knitted it on a 10 and a half. Oh, good. Okay. It's, it's so deceiving this is, when it's in white to me. It always seems... It seems smaller. Yes, And it actually, does. it's not just a deception. White yarns are typically just a little thinner than a colored yarn of the same of the same exact yeah. brand. But it's funny because this one right here, this Big Twist uh, Premium, it is a number four. It's a worsted, but it, it, it has a big fat look to it. It's very big and fat. And that's why we chose it. And notice what I did is I laid a couple of different yarns here to see what are we going to like that's duplicate. This was going to look like I embroidered, but if I just yeah. wanted to embroider a big E, this would be a great choice. This was the Serenity Active mm -hmm. from uh, Premier, the De Deborah Norville. But I think that these two are more consistent with each other. So yes. just playing with them and seeing what works the best. Um, but these are great. So 
Well, thank you, Marla. My for, pleasure. This was Marla and me joining you for Good Knit Kisses for the Duplicate Stitch. Thanks. My pleasure. <laughs> Have a great day and happy knitting. Bye-bye.